Matana, the new fang, a new name in politics, Liz Trust, the iPhone launches tomorrow, as well as the gas crisis, all coming up right now. Good morning, guys. This is Pounds for Breakfast, and I am your host, Dane van der Maast. Guys, in the next couple of minutes, we're going to cover everything you need to know and so much more in the Forex and financial market. So we're about to have a ton of fun together. Sit back and enjoy. This is available for you on YouTube. Uh, we are streaming at 1080p for your enjoyment. Remember, we will be live again this afternoon for the Dollars for Lunch session at 3.30, which is going to be mind blowing. Yes, Today we had US Labor Day. We were about to see a whole ton of volume come into the market, but without further ado, I think let's jump straight into the news and have a look at what are we dealing with in the world and in the markets today. So let's get started. Beautiful. So looking on the local front, guys, we continue to see these Gupta leaks uh, continue to leak the Gupta and link them to a bunch of other companies. And this will be something that we'll continue to see um, whether we ever will see, you know, justice come from, uh, you know, this pretty much sell out of our country and our infrastructure. Um, I don't 100% know, but leading on to them, uh, another good friend of theirs, um, obviously our president is still uh, dealing with all these scandals in terms of that uh, Pala Pala farm and everything that's happened there, which still continues to be a little bit of a mystery. Um, and quite honestly, it's, uh, it's quite an amazing thing to be a South African, to be within Africa. We see things like this. If this was any other country you know people would be in uprage there would be an uproar right we tend to see these things and brush off like oh, it's just another massive swimming pool that's being declared as a fire hydrant or fire water storage facility so you know we can give ourselves a massive pat on the back for just being able to take things so lightly um, but i do think there's going to be a time that comes where you know people need to take and look at these things a little bit more seriously uh, in terms of where that's going for us and our futures all right, beautiful. Moving on into the US news, guys. We have a few things happening this week, right? First and foremost, um, in terms of the current day, we have tomorrow Apple's annual product launch, right? Now, why is this important? This is pretty important because Apple's stock uh, formulates probably one of the heaviest weightings on the S&P 500, and that's just due to the massive nature of Apple's market cap. So tomorrow, we are going to be looking at trading Apple stock, um, having a look at that product launch and what does it look like. I'm gonna confirm whether the product launch is gonna happen after hours or within trading hours, but I think we really need to start diversifying and having a look at stocks um, and these different assets to diversify portfolios, right? Trading uh, S&P 500, trading NASDAQ, Dow Jones, great. But there becomes a time where we need to start understanding the underlying assets that build up these indices and up these portfolios. So I believe this iPhone launch is gonna be an amazing opportunity to have a look at the effects on Apple stock and what that could mean for us as traders. Um, so that's gonna be a ton of fun. And you obviously wanna stay tuned to be a part of that. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also have uh, a percent, a pretty much a 75 basis point hike expected from the ECB um, coming up this Thursday. Um, and really there's a ton of items busy happening in the European Union um, that sort of borderlines and really sort of edges on, on crisis. And that sort of is a good transition for us into pretty much this new name uh, in the markets, right? So 
the one person that is going to keep coming up is Liz Trust. So Liz Trust has been identified as the next prime minister. Um, and the markets aren't taking too well to it, right? Obviously, with a new face coming in, there's a bunch of promises in terms of what's going to be happening and what will she be doing uh, in order to curb what's happening in the country. Obviously, there's a gas crisis, and that is still a ripple effect from the Russia-Ukraine issue. Um, and there's a bunch of domestic issues she still needs to deal with on the ground. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how her role plays out and what her public perception is, right? Because politics is a lot about public perception. Perception, um, and how well she addresses some of these issues is going to be quite interesting. Um, really quickly, because we have very little fundamental data, I'm going to use this opportunity uh, to talk about, you know, is Matana the new Fang, right? So what does that mean? So historically, you know, uh, tech analysts generally have created the shortening, and that is uh, Matana, right? Which stands for Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Alphabet, NVIDIA, Amazon, right? That is the new term that was ultimately previously just FANG, F-A-A-N-G. And ultimately what this means is they've dropped Meta as well as Netflix from this new, I would say term in terms of who are these market leaders. So that's very interesting. I think Meta is a very interesting case in terms of what Mark Zuckerberg is doing in terms of the metaverse. He's taking a lot of heat, a lot of criticism. Um, so we're going to stick around and obviously make sure we find out a little bit more about that. Now, moving on to the economic calendar for today, um, we don't have too much, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, of noteworthy items that you know we really need to pay a lot of attention to. Uh, the US market is obviously currently open today. So we're going to have two items, I think, that could move uh, two of the major currencies, right? We obviously have a construction purchase manager index, and this data comes in for August. Again, all we're looking for here is the actual result higher or lower than the forecast and than the previous, right? So there's those relationships we have to take into account. In addition, US services PMI and the uh, composite PMI, ISM non-manufacturing employment, um, these are all going to weigh on the uh, dollar and these starting at that quarter to four to and all the way up until four o'clock. So quarter to four, those 15 minutes, we could see some external volatility from some of these fundamentals, um, but uh, I don't think it's the end of the world. So let's jump into analysis really quickly. Um, I'd like to obviously have a look at FX. I think there's some good opportunities for us today that we could potentially be able to trade this afternoon. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into uh, those opportunities. Okay. So first and foremost, um, I think it is best for us to look at your USD. Your USD has a beautiful setup as we identified uh, yesterday. Your USD is starting to complete that channel that I approximated um, in terms of what we could end up seeing here. Now, do I think that your USD is an immediate sell? Is there some sell uh, in the bag here? Um, I think so, and I believe so. Um, I think this is going to really be more of a scalp position than any sort of uh, major investment decision. Um, I've obviously spoken about this yesterday. Your USD is stronger than the euro uh, for the first time. It happened a few weeks ago, but it's now officially below that parity level where the dollar is currently stronger than the euro for the first time in 20 years. So do I think that this is going to be an immediate sell? Well, it's a little bit hard to say in the sense that we could always see that push back up to the top side, but it is, I am fairly optimistic to see that the start of the US market, we do have some of that strength towards the downside on the dollar. The dollar is definitely showing um, that it has it in it. And I think we want to monitor this and it's simply just through the means of structure. So I would be looking for a short position below this level over here. So, um, Let's have a look here. So in one euro buys 99 cents and 43 pips of the dollar is where I could be looking for a short. So we could see that dollar extension uh, towards the downside from a from a just a pure uh, volume perspective. Quickly, just touching on FX because I know we're running out of time. Um, as I said yesterday, I would like to see a pullback on USD ZAR back down to that 61.8. I certainly think it's possible. We are starting to see that slowdown in momentum. Um, and regardless of dollar strength, I would still be looking 
for an ultimate buy situation in that zone right there, right? So in that area right there, that would be where I'd be looking for an ultimate buy. 61.8, diagonal support, let's go. That's what it should all be about. Okay, moving into indices really quickly, guys. Uh, US 30, as we discussed yesterday, we're pretty much range bound. I'm going to quickly look at a five minute here, but we're stuck on that 61.8, beautifully positioned on that 61.8. Now, does that mean we are in a position to potentially start going long? Definitely, right? Definitely. I think if we're in a position here where we start to break out specifically, uh, we are going to be looking at this uh, 500 period, and that is on a five minute time frame, also reflected on a one minute, it's a little bit more aggressively, but the 500 period on a five minute time frame is generally the resistance band we look for from a scalping perspective, right? And you can see in the past, when we've broken above it, we've hovered, but ultimately pulled back below. In this case, we broke back, uh, broke above, attempted for a bull run, hit the 50 fib, and then fell back down below. So I'm very interested over the next couple of hours, do we break that resistance and where do we go from there? So that's gonna be a hot one. I will be trading this at 3.30 this afternoon, and I think there's gonna be some massive volume in the markets, and we could have quite a bit of fun. Now, I am starting a little bit earlier than 3.30. We are gonna be starting at about uh, 20 past three, and that's gonna give us 10 minutes just to do a setup, because we're gonna do some really cool uh, sort of price action, uh, buy limits, sell limits above and below, and I'll use that as an opportunity to teach you some really simple strategies and how to capitalize on high uh, volume, high impact, fast moving instruments, right? And this can be applied to crypto, can be applied to a bunch of different things. Okay, moving into commodities. Again, as I said, we will start to add other items uh, as we move forward, but ultimately we're gonna be focusing and keeping our attention on gold. Now, looking at gold this morning, um, as I said yesterday, we drew out this market structure and gold started to adhere to this market structure really well. This is a 30 minute time frame. We made a potential, we made a little bit of a up thrust to try and get through that level. Um, we made a little bit of a spike to that level, that resistance immediately rejected, but we have a really beautiful support level right here. Okay, so the support is pretty much giving us all of that structure, holding up gold in that perfect position. So what are we looking for? Right, extremely simple. We're looking for a break either to the downside and some sort of successful retest. Um, we always would wanna see a break first some sort of correction to compensate for that break and then a runner towards the downside ultimately and inversely if we see a break towards the top side meaning we break this diagonal move here then we'd want to see that runner continue to the top side now we might also have fibonacci on our side here to there we go beautiful so we can see that that push happened to that 61.8 which is right there we are sitting on that 50 so really that 50 is going to be that deciding point um, are we going to make a move up are we going to make a move down um, i think this is going to be uh, pretty cool for us to take advantage of all right now moving into cryptos right we are going to start to have more emphasis on cryptos in terms of news on cryptos uh, we'll have something called crypto corner which is where we really just specialize in cryptos and i think it's an emerging space we really need to start paying more attention to um, as we make and move into a more concerted effort uh, to essentially you know bring crypto into the weekend trading space that is what that is all about now before i go ahead and explain this guys please go ahead make sure that you like and subscribe to our social setups right it is super important we're busy doing some amazing things across all social media platforms um obviously watching this youtube video right now hit that like button hit the bell notification button and that way you'll always get a brand new upload and be the first to know all right super simple as always your support is appreciated all right let's give it a quick look so crypto in the bitcoin all right so we will be doing a separate episode just on Bitcoin. It's an amazing um, use case. It's an amazing story. We just see so many repetitive moves. I mean, just I have a few seconds left. I'm just going to show you this, right? So we have so many times the same thing repeating. 
right over and over and over again and all we are in right now is the latest installment of that move right so we're currently sitting at that 78.6 right and this is where you know it broke the twenty thousand dollars to a coin everybody's freaking out guys if this doesn't hold support, I believe we got, could and very well can make a move down to 12,000, 13 to 12,000 dollars a coin. That is the 88.2, right? If you look at what most analysts are saying, the price to produce from an energy perspective, the true cost to produce one Bitcoin, it's around about 11 to 12,000 dollars. Okay, so that is the true value, the true price. And I do believe that we do have a, a target sitting at that 12 to 13,000 on Bitcoin is where I personally believe there's value and where I would personally add Bitcoin into my portfolio for more long positions. So definitely stay tuned to this. There is beautiful market structure that we're observing on this Bitcoin setup. Um, even moving closer for those of you who are scalpers, um, there is again, more beautiful market structure to take advantage of. Um, but yes, Bitcoin is something that we definitely wanna watch and something we definitely wanna get more involved, of, involved in from a trading perspective. I just do however believe there's more available to the downside. There's a bigger move down to the, uh, to the downside that we can potentially take advantage of and then ultimately buy it at its lowest point at that 88.2 FIB level. Guys, thank you for spending this time with us this morning. Uh, as always, delivered nice and early into your inboxes so you have a bit of insight for the day. Now remember, New York Stock Exchange open. We are live together. We had a great test run yesterday and I'm looking forward to hosting every single one of you this afternoon. Now remember, this also involves your comments, right? So if you wanna see certain things analyzed, you'd like to see certain things traded, if you'd like to see how we deal with a brand new chart, the mindset, the, the methodology, the risk side of things, as always, please leave a comment down below and we will take those items into suggestion to better evolve the show to your needs. Guys, I am Dane von Amust and this has been a great quick session giving you everything you need to know in this particular space. Guys, until I see you all a little bit later, I want you all just to have an amazing day. And uh, as always, be safe, trade safe. Love you all. Shalom.